I'd say there are four key things that differentiates NetBank. The first and without doubt the most important is our people and our culture that is very focused on delivering market-leading client experiences in an ethical and sustainable way. Secondly, we are more a wholesale bank than a retail bank. The third thing that would differentiate us is a very deliberate and considered tech journey to enable us to build a tech platform that is much more digital and much more agile and in so doing provide our customers with a significantly better client experience. And then finally our footprint on the African continent between ourselves and our strategic partner in Central and West Africa, Ecobank, we have the largest footprint across the African continent of any of the competitor group. Nedbank is a purpose-led, values-driven organization. Our purpose statement at Nedbank is to use our financial expertise to do good for individuals, families, businesses and society. And that's really the North Star. It's the guiding light that has kept Nedbank sustainable and growing since 1834. We live it in everything that we do, whether it's the service you experience from us as a bank, the products that we offer you, what we do in the societies that we're in. If you look at what consumers are looking for in brands these days and how they are judging companies, you have to be purpose-led. And you know, a lot of consumers are judging companies based on the values that they have and if those values speak to who they are as consumers, which is why it's very important for us. So we're focusing constantly on being a purposeful organization in that bank because of the fact that organizations with great culture are synonymous with great uh, financial performance. It's very easy to talk about a purpose statement, but for something to get real traction, you need to measure your progress. And actually what the Sustainable Development Goals have done is they've provided the world with a scorecard to measure progress towards a better world. We took as NetBank those sustainability goals and allocated none of them to executive committee members to champion them. So they're a very powerful tool for measurement and aggregation to say, how are we doing in this pursuit of our purpose statement? Over a long period of time, it's very difficult to be a successful business in an unsuccessful society. And so from a corporate citizenship point of view, a good bank has to first and foremost be relevant to the society in which uh, it banks. So in South Africa, we're a society where there's huge challenges of unemployment, uh, huge challenges of economic transformation. So as a business leader and as the chief executive of a large bank in South Africa, I felt it was absolutely vitally important that our voice was heard and heard strongly around those things that were going wrong and we put up our hand to say, how can we help to fix South Africa? Fundamentally, when you're a bank, uh, you have to be the home of greater ethics because you're doing what you do uh, with lots of stakeholder interests in what you do and most importantly, how best you do it. So we have uh, several layers of governance. Uh, we subscribe to King4 and all of those uh, processes are aligned with how we do business. Having said that, there's always room for improvement. And I believe as we digitalize the processes and the systems, uh, we, from a governance point of view, need to keep in step as we change the business model and service delivery for NetBank. If we're looking about at the really big challenges and risks facing our industry, right now and NetBank, I think right up front would be the macroeconomic environment in South Africa and in particular how we are able to navigate the challenges currently facing ESKIM and then a little bit further out how we are able to navigate through the complexities of the land reform debate. Clearly there's escalating challenges in the cyber environment and thankfully to date we've had no cyber penetration of our business but we have an enormous focus and enormous amount of money being spent to make sure that, that our business and our clients' money is safe uh, in an increasingly hostile cyber environment. 
we see the deterioration of the balance sheet of the state-owned enterprises, and uh, that means that uh, those institutions can't be the the lead for new growth that we all sorely need. It stands to reason that the wholesale corporate sector will have to be the source of drive for new growth. For that to happen, we need uh, both business and investor confidence to come in. And so getting the politics right is important for unlocking confidence so that things can happen. We spent probably the last four or five years investing in what I would call the digital foundations. And right now we're at the really exciting stage that those foundations are complete and are starting to translate into a very different product experience for our customers. What defines us here is the rapid pace with which we have landed um, some solutions that we can really be proud of. Many of them have been recognized either internationally or locally. So if I can refer to the NetBank Private Wealth app, the NetBank Money app, these apps are getting some of the best scores that, that banks or in fact, any apps are getting anywhere. So it just shows you that we are really focused on clients and clients are telling us that, that we are hitting the mark. It does entail what I call not just uh, operating uh, model changes, but also business model changes. We're now moving into what we call new ways of work, more agile uh, forms of organization of our own teams. What it will then allow us is also to reduce the cost to serve those clients. And so we will be driving efficiency in the back end so that the delivery of these services is at an affordable uh, level. Between 2012 and 2018, we spent 7.7 .7 billion rents and we expect to continue to uh, uh, spend in the region of around 5 billion rands to complete that journey so that we can uh, develop a fully digitized bank where from a retail perspective, our top 10 products will be available digitally end to end, i.e. clients would not have to go uh, into the branch to complete uh, those transactions. We ran a very detailed process around managed separation together with our holding company, All Mutual Limited PLC. And we successfully completed this on the 15th of October 2018. So in any terminology, this is an extremely large and complicated corporate finance transaction. And I think what was particularly pleasing for us was that we ended 2018 as the best performing South African bank share on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and the fourth best performing stock out of the top 40 on the JSE. Our free float is now 80% compared to the 45% that we were when we were a subsidiary of All Mutual PLC, uh, and that is a positive. And then we deliberately managed the managed separation process in a way that it would have absolutely no impact on our strategy, clients, staff, or operations. And looking back, I can safely say we achieved that. It was a resilient financial performance, 14.5% earnings growth in a 0.8% GDP environment is certainly a very strong outcome. Our non-interest revenue grew at 7.9%. Again, in the tough environment, you know, we can only be grateful about that. Uh, our expenses growing at 6%, showing that business has been quite diligent in terms of uh, managing costs and uh, our impairment ratio at 0.53%, uh, which is also quite low, showing that our risk management processes have been effective. For the rest of Africa specifically, ETI had a material turnaround with um, 1.3 billion swing on, um, on uh, our associate income line. Very, very strong performance coming through. And as a consequence, we were able to declare a dividend to our shareholders, which grew just over 10% year on year. So in short, I think a very resilient financial performance in a very difficult operating and macroeconomic environment. So when we think about value creation in a bank, we always talk about three pillars of value creation. The first one is the job of the management team to grow the net asset value of the business. And here during 2018, we grew the NAV just over 3%, but we did have some one-off adjustments from things like the odd lot offer that we did 
post the managed separation and from some of the changes in accounting statements. And stripping out those two adjustments, NAV growth would have been closer to 9%. We also secondly say the job of the management team is to take that net asset value or equity in the business and generate a return on equity greater than the cost of equity. And we did just that with our ROE excluding goodwill increasing to 17.9% and the gap between return on equity and cost of equity opening, meaning strong growth of more than 60% in economic profit, and then collectively using that economic profit to reinvest back in the business and pay shareholders a dividend, and that dividend grew by 10% over the year. We achieved a one trillion rand balance sheet. The significant improvements that we've made to client service delivery and our absolute uh, obsession on client service and the way we've shifted that. The investments that we've made in IT and the digitalization of the bank and really trying to get to the next wave, identifying what's coming around the corner and judiciously managing our expenses and spending the money that we're saving in the right areas. I believe we have delivered value and I am confident that we'll continue to deliver value because when we talk about all of these solutions that we are commercializing, they will continue to, to focus on the issues that are important to uh, shareholders and, and I'm very excited and very bullish about the future. I think NetBank provides a great value proposition to all our different stakeholders. Uh, we are a growing business. We are um, a business that is uh, well diversified. And uh, the dividend yield that NetBank has is also quite uh, attractive for shareholders. So we think that it is a, a wonderful uh, business to continue to associate with. And we look after all our stakeholders. It's no secret in South Africa we're going through a very volatile time. But having said that, uh, we stand by the commitments we've made to the market. We currently expect that diluted headline earnings per share in 2019 will grow at greater than or equal to nominal GDP growth, which we would estimate at around about 6%. And uh, we think that we will have some significant challenges on the cost to income ratio, which is gonna be a little bit more difficult to achieve in the current economic climate. But having said that, uh, we feel reasonably positive that we're online to deliver this. And I'm pleased to say I don't think we're going to disappoint. What's fantastic about being a bank that's been in the market for more than 100 years is, one, we understand how banking works, right? And you have to trust that, you know, we've been there, we've been doing it for 100 years. But more than that, I think the journey that the bank has been on in the last couple of years from a digital perspective tells you that we're going to use that expertise and digitalize it and give you a much better sort of banking experience. I believe that we will have a, a digital offering that will forever change the view of of NetBank um, as a bank and people will see us in a, a very different light and I believe it's going to excite uh, new clients to, to join us. I think this business is um, well positioned for the period that lies ahead of us. So wherever I look, I see potential for growth, albeit in an environment characterized by headwinds. But guess what? a strong team with self-belief and a game plan and the wherewithal you go to play regardless of the conditions. Our responsibility is to create value for our stakeholders, including shareholders, irrespective of the conditions that prevail.